It's a hand out of Wind Creek in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Oh, another it's, Pennsylvania call. Yes, I have been to parks as well. Um, this one is uh, a little bit to the west. Um, this pl- this place five... used to be called something different. Is that right? Sands. Sands, right. Okay, 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 okay. Wind Creek. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so it's a hand um, played at the 510 level. Um, so 3K cap. Uh, and we're 3K effective, but most people buy in for like 1.5K, 2K. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy, the villain in this hand, I think bought in for 3K though. He, he's pretty good. I bought in for 1.5 and, and ran it up a little bit, okay. um, which is kind of relevant because I was nervous because it's the most money I've had uh, on a live table before. This is the so. most money you've had 3K playing in front of you. Yes, yes. And I then, just started really taking live seriously maybe like a year and year and a half ago. And I assume that this is the largest game at Wind Creek too, right? 510? Yes, yes. And so did you move your way up through 2-5 and stuff too? I did, I okay. did. I started at like 1-2, one, 1-3, one, oh, and wow. then I was like decided to just kind of take a crack at 2-5. It mm-hmm. felt like I was ready. And then, yeah, I mean, it just, after you know, doing some of the training materials and stuff. I just figured I'd take a shot. I, I've only played it maybe a handful of times. Okay. So 3K effective, 510. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and so the pot was straddled to $20. Oh, okay. and... So you're only really 150 effective then. Right, right. Okay. Um, so I'm in the big blind. I've got Ace of Clubs, King of Spades. Okay. And the low jack opens for $60. And this guy is, he's pretty good. Um, he looks like the kind of guy who would be kind of aggressive and, and maybe a little wild, but he's kind of sneaky solid. And so it folds around to me. I three bet up to 200. So just one comment real quick here too. Um, so he had you covered, obviously. Yes. Right? So but I, I was I was at 3K. I think he had maybe like 4K to start. Okay. I, I mean, it, it, nobody's going to fault you for three betting here. And also, too, because of the, the stakes are are at 150. But mm-hmm. this is not always a three bet. With some, so okay. you're are you in the big blind where you're not the straddle? So there's somebody right. to your left. Okay. Then it is always a three bet. I'm sorry. I was thinking about this from the per- perspective of um, if you're closing the action pre and you get somebody who opens from early position especially when you're out of position when deep it is it is not mm-hmm. always a three bet with ace king off a lot of times you will see called now here you're in the middle so i would play this mostly as a three bet and you're really not all that deep just just something to note okay but i don't have any issue with sense. your three bet so you go to 200 okay i mean it's a you go into just over 3x you're going to get a lot of probably calls here to the sizing i mean it's not super small but yeah, I know some of your materials say like four or five X um, from this spot. I just, I didn't want to totally blow the pot. I was mm-hmm. already a little bit uncomfortable. So I was like, okay, let's keep this under control. Um, just, just out of, just, I mean, the guy to your left, was he V pipping a lot where you wanted to drive him out of the pot? Because there sometimes are situations where I, I would almost treat this like you're, if I have a nitty guy to my left, sometimes mm-hmm. you can even treat this like you are closing the action. But then a lot of people are going to complete you know, because they think they're getting pot odds and you don't want that. Just something to think about. Yeah, I should have thought of that. No, the guy to my left, the the straddler was actually pretty nitty. So I probably could have gotten away with just flatting. And then you're going to have to continue on though, if you play it that way on a lot of boards. So I don't think yeah. anybody's going to yeah. fault you here for three betting. So you go to 200. Okay. Yes. Uh, and low jack uh, calls. Okay. So mm-hmm. nothing else to say there. Mm-hmm. All right, so the pot is, I've got around 420. 420. Mm-hmm. Um, so the flop came out, ace of diamonds, six of hearts, five of clubs. Ace of diamonds, six of hearts, five of clubs? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And so I checked because this is a pretty dry texture. And actually, as a woman, I find that when I check after betting or three betting, I face a lot of aggression, which... Sometimes I like, but in this case, ends up being a little bit troublesome. Um, so well, I checked. Well, let me just give you some of my thoughts on here. Again, like at this sort of SPR and sort of stack size and things like that. I mean, because you're playing, you know, like I said, off of about 150 big blinds um, with a three bet here. You know, a, a lot of things here would be bet 
on this type of board as a three better. I mean, uh, in, in a spot like this, even some, you know, pairs that are lower than an ace for a little bit of protection or just sort of overall kind of range bet like EV type of play. But I mean, I, I think that it's always good in live poker to bet for value, like the top parts of your range. Um, I mean, maybe you get away with like checking ace ace, right? Cause you just block the whole board and the whole idea of slow playing is to have somebody catch up to something else. You know, if someone has a pair, but I mean, in general here, I'm probably not going to be checking here a whole lot. Um, I, you probably can take that sort of smaller sizing here as a bet with, with most of the range, but in general, I, I just, I, I mean, if you want to throw in some, if you want to throw in some checks with like a weak ace, you know, something like that. I don't know how often you're going to be three betting here. I mean, maybe if you're playing a three better fold strategy here from the from the middle blind and you have some like ace four types of holdings, things like that. But in general, I would probably be betting. Now, with that being said, you know, even with a little bit of a background here that you gave, I mean, you're going to have to call down here if you're going to play it like this unless something crazy, right. crazy happens. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Uh, yes. And that's kind of what I assumed. Uh, so yes, he, he went ahead and bet, uh, 200. Um, so about half pot. And I, for that reason called the other thing that I will note. So, so you check, he bets 200 and you call the other thing that I, I will say, even if you're saying that people try to bluff you a little bit more than everybody else, cause maybe they think that you're a woman and you, and you play weak tight. I still, Still, even if I was that type of player where I was, I had the perception to everybody else that I was weak tight, I still don't really see people tr like go buck wild on ace high boards versus people who are the three better because the three better is going to have some like ace ace. It's just like one of these things. Like I can't even remember, like, you know, I've seen tens of thousands of hours of commentary. The last time I've seen somebody try to, you know, barrel somebody off of like king king or queen queen as the defender preflop on an ace high board i mean i'm sure it happens but i just think it's a lot less than people think and i so. think you're right i mean sometimes i i think i i perceive it more than it's actually happening it just seems like i get put into spots sometimes but i may be putting myself there by <laughs> by checking when so, i I'm so, three better. so some people, so Nate was our first caller said that if you check here, you have to check raise. That's interesting. That actually isn't something that I even considered right off the bat, just because if you had given that sort of backstory, um, the only thing I would say about that, and which is why in general, I like to bet more is from Katie's perspective, I think that she's trying to give the opponent some rope to hang himself. I mean, it would be a disaster if the guy like bet folded an ace here or something like that, right? Right. Yeah, no, I was trying to hopefully induce from, because like I said, he's pretty solid. So I was hoping to maybe induce from Ace Queen and embolden Ace Queen a little bit. Well, I mean, I actually don't want you, if I were you, I don't want your villain to have Ace Queen because I don't think he's going to go three streets with Ace Queen. I'd actually yeah. rather have him yeah. have a bluff. I mean, if you knew that he had Ace Queen, let's say that you could see the cards, yeah. then, then, then the way that I would advocate playing this is just go bet, bet, bet. Yeah. Right? If you If you could see his cards. Right. But okay. So 200 and call. So the pot's 820. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So then the turn is the six of hearts or uh, no, the six of. We got the it? six of hearts on the flop. So six of hearts on the flop. Uh, yeah. Well, it paired the board and it brought in a heart draw. So maybe we'll just say five of hearts for purposes of. It brought yeah. it so so is it is it possible that it was six of clubs five of hearts because I think I remember because I think it makes a slight difference so okay yeah. I, I do believe it was two sixes mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that there was a heart draw that came in a backdoor heart draw came on the, on the turn right so. and then looking at your hand you don't have the ace of, I mean that, that this is where it comes into play you don't have the ace of hearts so it's possible someone can have ace x of hearts here. Whether the six or the five pairing makes that much of a difference, probably not that much, just in, in terms of maybe he has a, one or two more combos of like six X that he's defending with like seven, six and eight, six suited instead of like four five suited only. Um, so yeah. Very, very sort of nuanced. Okay. Pretty good. I think that's, a th I mean, I think that's a great card for you, right? Because all the draws are certainly breaking out, right? Right, right, yeah. right. 
Um, so yeah, that came and then I checked again, just kind of continuing with the plan and then he bets 400 this time. And I kind of acted like I was mulling it over, obviously wasn't. And I just called. Yeah, I get suspicious. Obviously now the way that you've played it, I think we can all get on board. I think with, with, with sort of check calling, especially with the backstory, I, I do get a little bit suspicious here because, I do wonder if the opponent is, is the opponent ever betting ace jack or ace queen like this here? Well, and that's why I start getting nervous, but uh, I'm just trying to think of what he has because like I said, he's pretty solid. So I don't think, and maybe I'm just thinking from my perspective, but I just didn't think he'd be calling uh, a three bet, you know, without you know, something pretty good, but I don't well, know. No, I know that, but I mean, he has to ha- defend with like ace queen suited and, and I mean, it would kind of be, n- n- uh, maybe I guess I can get on board with an ace queen off fold. I usually keep those for a very, very tight configurations, but I mean, so ace, some ace queen, ace queen suited, obviously like ace jack. My question though, is just that when you three bet, and mm-hmm. you check all the flop, if I'm in his position and I'm like, all right, well maybe she's got like Kings or Queens. Do I want to try to, am, am I, I'm trying to get some value here. So the 400 seems a little bit inefficient to me mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. I, if I were him, I would probably be taking a, a slightly smaller sizing. If I was trying to rope you in here, um, sure. you know, with an ACE, it's just something that a thing. So you call the pot 1620. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. And then the river is a 10 of clubs. 10 of clubs. So that doesn't really change anything here with just like, not unless, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to, I mean, the only thing that that might change. And again, uh, for the same reasons that I just said, I don't even know if he has ace queen or ace jack. I don't think he has ace 10 here and you no know, 10, 10. I mean, that would have to assume that he's trying to turn 10, 10 into a bluff. And then he ran into, you know, a boat here. Like he was like, oh, you had when you check the flop, and, and again, that that's another one of these spots where it's just ten ten just gets checked back so much on the flop as opposed to taking some hand with some sort of showdown value that might be like king queen that might be like king queen suited, and now just blindly bluffing it for three straight. So I find that very unlikely, right? You know that he right, has ten yeah. ten. So I assume you're going to check again. I checked again, and uh-huh. he bet a thousand this time, which you know is the big orange pumpkin chip, which I am not used to having in front of me. <laughs> so you still so have, you still have money behind too, right? I mean, you, I mean, you, to to go to the river, it looks like you guys have put in what four eight, so you got like twenty two, and he's betting a thousand into sixteen. So it's not like he's he went all in for like twenty two, right? No, he did not. What I still he, had some money behind. Let me ask you this question though. Just before you, I mean, I think that we know what the play is here for you. I don't think there's really any merit here in doing anything else but calling. I mean, some people might consider folding, but I just think that with the whole backstory, you can't do that. I was just wondering, like, if you could ever possibly check raise, but I just, the whole line is like he's trying to represent something stronger or he's just right. bluffing. I guess once in a while, maybe if I were him. I might think I'm just taking you to town or free rolling like ace king. Let me ask you this question. What if he had bet 2200 all in here? (laughs) Uh, I'm glad he didn't. Let's just put it that way. I I definitely would have been worried. Um, I mean, I don't know if the analysis changes, though. Um, I mean, it's hard for me to fathom what he has. I mean, I, I don't think he calls my three bet with pocket sixes. I mean, I don't think. Um, maybe he has ace ace, but I can't really do anything about well, that. Well, I mean, the I thing, mean, the things that you're would be concerned about that would be somewhat consistent here, especially if he didn't have an ace and unblocked, it would be if he had you know a set of fives, six six or five six suited, or if right. he had like ace right. six. Um, you know, you look, didn't think you can look at the, that much for that. But maybe, but you didn't three bet though that large though. That's that's, that, that's sort of good. I mean, it's not like you went to like five X. By the way, too, a little technique is um I know we were a little bit wishy washy with the suits, but just one of the things that, you know, if I were you first of all, I'm definitely gonna call, but one of the things that makes it close is like you look at the suits of the ace that's on the board and the ace in your hand, and then the sixes. So the ace of clubs is in your hand, the ace of diamonds is on the board, you've got the six of hearts and the six of clubs, so 
Uh, I don't believe there's any ace. There's one, excuse me. There's ace six of spades. So sometimes there can be none depending on what's out. Sometimes there can be two. If you're looking at like a suited combo of a certain hand based upon what you have. I mean, obviously here you're going to call. I I just kind of wonder out loud, like if he had gone 2200, what do you think you would have done if he had gone 2200 here? Uh, Does it change anything? I want to say that I would call because Mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense for him to have me beat here, but uh, in game with that much money on the line, I don't know. (laughs) It's possible I would have folded. On the flip side though, on the flip side, I will tell you that if I was your opponent, and you and I decided to take this 400 sizing on the turn, and you called, and I was pretty sure that you were either holding on with king, king, or queen, queen, or you had a hand like you did, then then what I would do is move all in, because I don't think I'm going to get another street from king, king from you, whether I go 1,000 or 22, and I want to put you in a spot here um, with ace, king, obviously, and I think that I would think that you'd be forced to call down, and this is just a, it's a math problem, like, if I bet a thousand and it gets called a hundred percent of the time, that's a thousand EV for me. Say I've got pocket fives or five, six. If I bet 2000 and I get called 60% of the time, that's 1200 EV. So that's a, that's a better bet for me. You know what I mean? Um, but as played, I mean, I, I, I assume that you called, right? Probably didn't think about it too much. Yeah, I mean, I sat there for a little bit and it didn't it didn't feel good, but yes, I I threw in the pumpkin chip. Okay, and and he had Ace of Hearts, King of Hearts, so he was Whoa. kind of free rolling me on the turn. Um, but yeah, so and he kind of lamented after the hand that he should have jammed turn. Right, and that, and that's what I would be thinking about too. But I would say that. If I was your opponent and I held ace king and you played eight, I would actually be more likely to bet less here to try to get that rope call. I wouldn't think you have ace king as play. If I have ace king here and you've and you played this hand this way, I don't think that ace king is a big portion of your range, especially when I block a lot of the combos. So I don't want to go buck buck wild and have you fold out you know, ace four suited or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, sure, and sure. even then that might even supposed to be a call like in theory. So if I hold ace king and I'm your opponent, I don't think you have a lot of ace king here. Now it's different though. A little, I mean, it's slightly different though, if I don't have an ace, but I, but I beat sort of a single pair. So um, yeah, that one, that one's interesting, but I, but I definitely think it was played, you know, non-standard from the start. Cause most of the time, you know, you would be, You'd be betting. Really, what this should have been is probably just bet, 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 call. Bet, bet, bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and I'm not sure what sizing, I guess, I should have taken if I was betting three streets. And what would I do if he check raised? Um, I guess I you mean you mean raise it. You mean raise your bet on the or, turn? Or if, he, if he, yes, exactly. He's in position. So, yeah, if he raised me on any street, I don't know. Especially if he raised me on the turn. Like, now knowing that he had ace of... Hearts. So he had the back, and he had the backdoor flush draw too, right? Right, right. Yeah. So he probably would have raised turn when the board paired, which would have given me a little bit of a panic attack. So. I mean, if I have ace king of hearts there, and you you go bet bet on the turn, and the middle card pairs, and you probably don't have it, and I just have a stone cold free roll you on right. hearts, yeah, I'd probably start putting money in. Right. And, and I would either try to shape it to try to get you to fold, because um, you know good to get you to fold off your equity and I can also improve too. So it would, it would have been an interesting little situation, but I appreciate you, Katie. That was the first time that, um, I know this is the first time that you called in. I know that you're a subscriber, so good luck to you. By the way, our moderator, Mike G, I think he might play at Bethlehem Wind Creek. Sometimes I know he plays at parks, but, um, awesome. good luck to you. Thanks for having me.